Today, we're building a real-time collaborative editor using WebSockets and React. If you've ever used Google Docs and wondered how real-time collaboration works, this tutorial is for you. By the end of this video, you'll have a fully functional collaborative editor running locally on your machine. Let's get started. All right, let's kick things off by setting up our project. First, open your terminal and create a new directory for your project. You can name it something like Collab Editor. Navigate into this directory. Next, we'll initialize a new node.js project. Run npm init ym to create a package.json file with default settings. This file will help us manage our project dependencies. Great. Now, let's install the necessary dependencies for our backend. We'll need Express for our server, WebSockets, Library for WebSockets, and Cores to handle cross-origin requests. Run this command to install dependencies. Now that we have our project set up, open the project in your favorite code editor. I am using VS Code. First, let's create our server file. In the root of your project directory, create a file called server.js. This file will contain all the code for our backend server. Open server.js in your code editor. We'll start by importing the necessary modules. We need Express for our server, the HTTP module to create an HTTP server, the WebSocket library for WebSockets, and cores to handle cross-origin requests. Next, we'll create an Express application and set up middleware to handle cores. This will allow our front end to communicate with the back end without any cross-origin issues. Now, let's create an HTTP server using the HTTP module and pass our Express app to it. This will allow us to handle both HTTP and WebSocket connections. With our HTTP server set up, we can now create a WebSocket server. We'll pass our HTTP server to the WebSocket server so that it listens on the same port. Well, for this collaborative editing app, we'll be working with text documents. So we create a variable called document and initialize it with an empty string, like an empty document waiting to be filled. Great. Now we have our WebSocket server set up. The next step is to handle WebSocket connections. We'll add an event listener for the connection event, which fires whenever a new client connects to our WebSocket server. Inside the connection event handler, we'll log a message to the console whenever a new client connects. This will help us debug and see when clients are connecting to our server. But we don't want to leave the new client hanging with an empty document. So we grab the current state of the document, which is stored in our document variable, and convert it into JSON format using json.stringify. Then we send this JSON data, which contains the document content, to the new client using the send method. Now that we're connected and have sent the initial document state, we need to listen for changes. So we have another event listener inside the connection block for the message event, which fires whenever a client sends a message to the server. This part listens for any messages coming from the client, the user editing the document. Whenever a message arrives, we try to parse it from JSON format back into a JavaScript object using json.parse. This lets us understand the structure of the message. Then we check if the message has a specific type using an if statement. In our app, we're looking for messages of type update. This means the user made a change to the document and is sending the updated content. If the message type is indeed update, we update our document variable with the new content received from the user. This keeps our server's copy of the document in sync with the user's edits. But our goal is real-time collaboration, so we don't just update our server-side copy. We want to broadcast this update to all connected clients. That's why we loop through all the clients connected to our WebSocket server. Inside this loop, we check if the client is still connected and ready to receive messages using client.readyState is open. If the client is good to go, we send them the updated document content using client.send in the same way we sent the initial content earlier. This way, whenever one user makes a change, all other users instantly receive the update and their screens reflect the changes in real time. That's how we achieve collaborative editing. Finally, we have a close event. This part handles the scenario where a client disconnects from the server. We simply log a message to the console indicating that a client has disconnected. With our WebSocket server set up to handle connections, messages, and disconnections, the last step is to start our server. We'll specify the port on which our server will listen and log a message to the console when the server starts. Save the file and run the server using nodeserver.js in the terminal. You should see a message indicating that the server is listening on port 5000. 
And there you have it. Our backend server is now set up and ready to handle real-time communication using WebSockets. Now that our backend is up and running, let's move on to building the front end of our collaborative editor. We'll be using React to create a responsive and interactive editor interface. First, let's create our React application. Open a new terminal window and navigate to your project directory. Run the following command to create a new React app. This will create a new directory called client with a basic React setup. Navigate into the client directory and install the socket.io client library, which we'll use to handle WebSocket connections in our React app. Open the client directory in your code editor. We'll start by creating a simple editor interface. Open app.js and replace its contents with this code. We'll begin by importing the necessary modules. We need React, useState, and useEffect from the React library. We'll also import our CSS file for styling. Next, let's define our app component. We'll use the useState hook to manage the state of our editor content and the WebSocket connection. Here, we're creating two pieces of state. Document, a string to store the current content of the editor. Socket, a WebSocket instance to handle the WebSocket connection. Now, let's set up our WebSocket connection using the useEffect hook. This hook will run once when the component mounts and clean up when the component unmounts. Inside the useEffect hook, we create a new WebSocket connection to our server at localhost 5000. We set the socket state and add an event listener for the onopend event, which logs a message to the console when the connection is established. Next, let's handle incoming messages from the server. We'll add an event listener for the onMessage event, which updates our document state with the new content. Here, we're ensuring that the message is received as a JSON string and updating our document state with the new content. We'll also handle the onClose and Honorer events to log messages to the console when the connection is closed or an error occurs. Finally, we'll clean up the WebSocket connection when the component unmounts by returning a cleanup function from the useEffect hook. Now, let's create a function to send updates to the server. We'll call this function handle change. In the handle change function, we check if the input is not empty and the WebSocket connection is open. If so, we send the input content to the server and update the document state. Finally, let's render our editor interface. We'll create a text area for the user to type in and display the current content of the document. In the render method, we're creating a text area that is controlled by the document state. We update the document state whenever the user types in the text area. Let's add some basic styling to our editor interface. Open app.css and add the following styles. Save the file and start the React development server by running npm start in the client directory. This will open your collaborative editor in the browser. Make sure your backend server is running. Open two browser windows or tabs and navigate to localhost 3000 in both. You should see the collaborative editor interface with a text area in each window. Start typing in one of the windows. As you type, you'll see the changes appear in real time in the other window. This is the power of WebSockets and real-time communication. Notice how the text is synchronized across both windows. This means that multiple users can collaborate on the same document simultaneously, just like in Google Docs. This real-time synchronization is made possible by our WebSocket server, which broadcasts updates to all connected clients. Whenever a client sends an update, the server receives it, updates the document state, and then broadcasts the update to all other clients. Our collaborative editor is now fully functional and ready for real-time collaboration. You can expand this project by adding more features, such as user authentication, conflict resolution, and more advanced text editing capabilities. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and inspiring. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more coding tutorials and tech content. Happy coding, and see you in the next video.